It's a shame that a whole city like Nairobi doesn't even have traffic lights. Hi guys, so today we're going to be looking at why Nairobi is not yet a world class uh, city. Here's why. One of the reasons why Nairobi is actually not yet a world class real estate uh, city is not particularly because Nairobi does not have world class real estate. It's the reason for you to have world class real estate. You'll need other components like transport, drainage, garbage collection, the security. There's a number of factors which make a city to become world class. So today I'm going to talk about some of those issues, but I'm going to point out the three biggest ones that I think make Nairobi not become world class. The first thing I'm going to talk about is definitely the transport system around and in Nairobi. The reason why that's an issue, yes, you could be staying in one of the best real estates like Karen, Modaiga, Runda, but when you want to go to work, we need to use public transport system, which despite so much infrastructure which the government of Kenya has put in, there still remains to be quite a bit of traffic in and around Nairobi. I think the biggest problem with that is because of the, the initial planning of the city which we still rely on but was planned for probably 400,000 people but now has Nairobi has more than five to six million that means the transport system has not changed we are trying to widen the roads yes build over express passes but still there's still a bit of congestion in and around Nairobi. The other aspect about transport is Nairobi needs a mass transport system. We've seen this work really in countries like Tanzania and Dar es Salaam when they have BRT. Kenya needs a proper mass transit. If you can be able to board a train, a speed train, and get to town within 10 minutes, I would think most people will actually ditch a car and go either actually a train or a speed train to town so that we avoid having cars uh, in and around Nairobi. So the other aspect that I think does need to be looked at for Nairobi to become a world class city is waste management and garbage collection. In some parts we have to, to accept the government has done a good job. While you go to other parts of Nairobi, especially the, on the Eastlands, it is dirty. Garbage is not collected. You'll go to some places and you'll find uh, heaps of garbages just in the middle of the road. So that is one of the issues Nairobi County has not been able to address. The other aspect of waste management that Nairobi has to deal is with the actual culture. You can have the city cleaned as much as possible, but it cannot be clean if the people of Nairobi themselves keep on littering the city. It is a very common site where people just throw trash out of cars. And people just throwing uh, trash when they go to a, a shop buy something and just throw the trash anyhow. If you look at Kigali, which is actually one of the most cleanest cities in Africa, you will not find people trashing. As much as the government is doing its part, you still not find people trashing the city. So two aspects of cleanliness and garbage collection that need to be looked at for Nairobi to become a world-class city. The other point is planning. There is just poor planning in Nairobi. As much as the city is growing, there is new real estate coming up. The government is not doing the best it can to regulate what is being planned. I'll give you an example. In Nairobi, you'll find estates which are coming up, but there are no social amenities for those people. So in Nairobi, you'll find that housing has really become so expensive because the people who are able to afford estates where they have facilities within the estate itself. So you'll find that the biggest estates have a basketball court, maybe to train and do all sort of, uh, of social amenities. But in the common areas, you'll find that where there should be such facilities provided by the government, they are not there. People are just building houses. The other thing about planning is you'll get in Nairobi 10 high-rise buildings consecutively in the same place. And you beg the reason what happens with the sewage system, what happens with the power system, what happens with every other sort of system that is usually used in housing. And that's one of the biggest reasons. You'll always find Nairobi sometimes is getting the power blackout. That goes back to poor urban planning and the government not being able to enforce some of these rules that you cannot have more than a certain number of apartments in a place at one particular time. That's going to push uh, the social amenity which includes water, sewerage and power to the brink because it cannot be able to efficiently service everyone. Oh, actually guys, uh, 
we actually made a video on why Nairobi was ranked better uh, uh, in the property index than London and you can check it out. Bye.